welcome everyone. Glad to have you. My name is Doug Pradden from the American Culture Center. Very happy, very glad that everybody could come out and participate in this workshop, uh, which we are hosting for the second time with the Wiki Education Foundation. And uh, Samantha is here, and she'll talk to you all about what it's like to develop a Wikipedia assignment as part of your um, classroom instruction. But before that, I want to sort of talk about that relationship and what uh, Wikipedia assignments have looked like in the ACES program, which is sort of where it started, uh, where sort of where this relationship started about uh, five years ago or so. So as you all know, the AC Center is home to the AC requirement, which is the graduation requirement on campus. It's what students have to take in order to graduate, regardless of their major. Um, and so AC is constantly uh, growing its curriculum and thinking about ways really to reach all the different departments um, and all the amazing research that's going on uh, with the faculty, uh, with the librarians, all sorts of creative ways to really grow the curriculum. And one of the ways that it's grown in the last seven years was the American Cultures Engaged Scholarship Program. And that's sort of what I have up here. Uh, we have here an inventory of all the great work that's come out of the American Cultures Engaged Scholarship Program. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with the program, what it is is it's taking an AC course, which is centered around the idea of race, culture, and ethnicity in the US, and it's pairing these very classrooms with community experts on social issues. And that could be, just like the AC curriculum, in over 30 different departments. It could be in anything from anthropology, ethnic studies, it could be um, even uh, sometimes not just necessarily with academic units. As you see here, it's been with the Labor Center, it's been with the School of Public Health. And one of those assignments, uh, some, of the, some of the projects that come out of there are working with community organizations to think about how students can take all the great learning that goes on in the classroom and pair that with the great wisdom that goes on in the communities. And one of the community partners that we uh, uh, developed over the past couple of years was the Wikipedia Foundation. We had a Wikipedia in residence who was helping us to develop these assignments and uh, for several years he was really working hands-on with students. Eventually that relationship blossomed into the point where the Wiki Education was directly involved with us in developing these uh, Wiki Education modules, which taught students how to make Wiki, Wikipedia pages from scratch. Uh, so it no longer required one specific person. It was this great, robust system that had been built out. Um, and I just want to quickly show you some examples of the great work that students developed in those um, classes. Uh, the first one is actually uh, some of the more recent pages that came out, which was out of Integrated Biology. So we hosted this workshop, I want to say one, two years ago, some, something like that. And one of the attendees uh, really ran with it, right? Uh, she understood uh, sort of the, all the work that goes into it. And she actually identified students in an AC course uh, in the fall, took a small cohort, turned it into a, and enrolled them into a seminar. That seminar then taught students individually, I think it was like between five and 10, how to develop Wikipedia pages they really ran with it. They developed these great Wikipedia pages, which I'm just going to click on to show you. Um, they developed some of these. Eventually what they did is once they had really figured that out and developed that research and really wrapped their heads around how to develop, how to develop Wikipedia pages, they actually then became what are known as uh, Chancellor's Public Fellows in the fall, meaning that they were then involved in an AC course and they were teaching students hands-on how to develop these Wikipedia pages. And these are all the different Wikipedia pages that were produced. Um, so it really is like the story of like all the great work that's been invested, that's, that goes into it, that's required to really develop these great pages. But you know, all the rewards that come from it, I mean, these are all pages that either didn't exist or if they did exist, I mean, they were a mere fraction of what they are now. So I'm just gonna click on one to give you an example, post canine. Um, so you can see here, uh, it's a full on Wikipedia page. You know, it's not a paragraph a about this specific topic. You know, we have sections, subsections, um, just kind of looking at it superficially compared to biology. And we have, all, of course, all the great references that we always like to see in our research, right? Um, let me just go back. I have a few caveats. Oh, thank you. 
Yeah. Um, so that was one specific uh, instance in which uh, the Wikipedia Foundation was a community organization. But there's also been instances in which um, there's community experts that are working on things like, um, if I can pull it up here. Uh, actually, it's not here, so just kidding. Uh, there, there are organizations that are working on reformative justice, uh, alternatives to incarceration. And they also said, we have this great research, uh, you know, We'd like to partner with your students to think creatively about how to get this into the hands of community members. AC really uh, being grounded in public issues, right, at a public institution, trying to think creatively about the public domain, uh, partnered with Critical Resistance to develop these Wikipedia pages, uh, specifically around reformative justice issues. Uh, to give you an example, for instance, uh, you all have probably heard about the prison industrial complex, right? So how many of you knew that before that, that page didn't exist before an AC course and sort of this relationship. Uh, so that really was a great example of how these partnerships really blossom into research that needs to be out there, research that students are capable of doing if the time and the investment is right and uh, can really happen once the relationship is right and once students really understand what it takes to develop a Wikipedia page. And that's exactly uh, what happened in that specific uh, instance. Uh, and there's plenty more of examples uh, we'd be happy to share with you. Uh, but that's really to give you a sense of how this relationship came to be and sort of what it has looked like to have Wikipedia pages in the AC Center as classroom assignments. Um, so these are all sorts of examples that you can see uh, in your sort of quest to want to develop pages. Uh, and you can see that by visiting our website, americancultures.berkeley.edu. Uh, you just click on collaborate and go down to student projects and uh, most of these well actually probably integrated biology will have uh, the biggest inventory of them and then uh, I think ethnic studies was just missing a page so we'll have that so we encourage you to take a look at some of those pages and uh, email us with any questions but of course on how to develop those pages I'm going to turn it over to Samantha and she's going to describe all what that process looks like okay Switching you guys are all being recorded today, by the way. Oh, I feel like women's clothing is never meant for this. <laughs> Any other women in the room feel that way? Um, okay. Can you guys hear me all right? Just right now my face is in the mic, so that's probably helpful. Okay, so I don't know how many of you guys have been to one of my workshops before. I know obviously Corliss has, but anyone else? Cool. So we've got a whole room of newbies. Um, my name is Samantha. I work for a nonprofit called Wiki Education. We just made the decision to drop foundation, so you would not know this yet, but we're Wiki Education now because people thought we were a grant giving foundation and we don't have any money. Um, so we dropped foundation, we're just Wiki Education, and we are a local nonprofit. We are in San Francisco. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation is the nonprofit that runs Wikipedia, and they're a different nonprofit. Um, we started as a pilot program that actually they started where they wanted to figure out how we could engage um, academic professionals in thinking about Wikipedia, and that pilot was very successful. And so, with their permission, we actually spun off in order to grow and scale the program. We became our own nonprofit. So, we're a grant funded nonprofit. Um, we work all across the US and Canada with instructors. Um, last semester, we supported all over 7,000 students who improved Wikipedia articles as part of their research projects and their coursework. And you're just very lucky because I live in Oakland, so I, and I actually went to Berkeley for grad school, so I love coming to campus, I love doing workshops here, and I will continue to do them as long as I am able and invited. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start with a, with a quick video. This should work. I tested it earlier. So here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
a really fun video because it kind of highlights the prevalence that Wikipedia plays in the way the world accesses information. Um, I think it's really easy to kind of stop, not really spend time thinking about that. The majority of people in the world do not have access to academic peer-reviewed research. Most of them, even if they did, wouldn't have the capacity to understand. Like, I could not read a chemistry research journal article to save my life. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what was happening. And Wikipedia plays this great part where it actually takes that research distills it for a public audience and provides access to that knowledge. Um, there are over 280 some odd languages um, all across Wikipedia, so different languages have their own communities who create their own articles. And I think I just want to start by kind of laying some of that framework for you guys so that you can maybe spend a minute thinking about the scope of Wikipedia. It's the sixth most visited website in the world. Um, on the English Wikipedia alone, there are over 5 million articles, but that doesn't include, again, the other 280 some odd languages that have their own unique article databases. Um, when we think about the way that people access Wikipedia, the Knight Foundation just actually did a study in 2016 where they looked at mobile internet usage. And what they found is that people were more likely to go to Wikipedia than any other website to find information when they're using their phones. Um, and I think that you know we all use our phones more often than not, and especially in in countries that are not as developed as the U.S. Um, your phone is your is your resource, is your access to the world's knowledge, and Wikipedia is where you find it. So um, yeah, when people want to know something, Wikipedia is where they find their answers, whether we like it or not. Which I think is is kind of a silly way to think about it, because I think it's good. I think it's great. Um, but people kind of don't understand the community of work that goes on behind the scenes for Wikipedia. So I'm just going to help frame some of that for you as well. Um, there are around 80,000 people around the world who contribute their time to volunteer to write Wikipedia for free. Um, everybody who edits Wikipedia does so for free. There is not really any paid editing. People like myself who, and people who work for the Wikimedia Foundation are mostly programmatic work, so trying to help educate, encourage, teach um, what, it, what it means to have Wikipedia, what, what the community is like. But the people who are actually writing that content who click that edit button are, are all volunteers. Um, and that's really great. They're all volunteering their time to write an encyclopedia for free. They're creating a set of core guidelines um, that are behind the scenes that help impact the quality of the work. So there's dozens of guidelines and policies that you probably don't know about that exist behind the scenes. There are bots that are removing vandalism, plagiarism. Um, there are lots of rules. And that's part of the work that Wiki Education does is try and help distill that information for people who don't know. Um, one of the big problems with that editorship on Wikipedia is that it's about 87 to 90% men. 
Um, and again, this is very much a reflection of the kind of people who have the time and the capacity to write an encyclopedia for free. Um, there are not many people who could do that. And we're grateful for those people who do contribute, but Wiki Education kind of understands that this is problematic and that we could do better in terms of how do we present the world's knowledge and what does it mean to be you know, supposed to be the sum of all human knowledge, but in academia we know that anytime a homogenous population does anything, we're not capturing the whole story. Um, so yeah, what that creates in terms of the content on Wikipedia is gaps in knowledge. So most of those people um, edit things that they're personally passionate about. And when you look at the number of featured articles on Wikipedia, so featured articles are the best of the best. They're as close to a peer-reviewed process as we have on Wikipedia. And um, when you look at them by theme, what you find is that the, the content that is the best of the best on Wikipedia very much reflects that 87% editorship. Um, there are you know, over 600 articles about military history and warfare, 400 about sports, 361 about music, um, over 250 about history, video games. But when you look into academic content, what you find is a big gap of information. And I mean, I think if we really stop to think about it, most academics aren't spending their time contributing to Wikipedia. And also most lay people don't have the capacity or the access to those resources to contribute to those articles, even if they wanted to. Um, yeah. What defines a featured article? So it's, it's, a, it's just a quality uh, denotation of, on Wikipedia. So it's as close to we have as a peer reviewed piece. I mean, it undergoes like a, a rigorous set of like 20 different review processes for comprehension, the quality of sources, what kinds of images. Um, you have to, you can only nominate it after it reaches another certain status in the quality review process. Um, and so really only the very best articles are, are called feature art articles, yeah. And are these featured for like a certain period of time? So they, they, you can lose your status. Um, the article can use its, lose its status. It's just like content, like the Grand Canyon is a featured article. Um, and it's possible that it could lose the status if new information comes forward or if, if something happens. But it doesn't often happen that articles lose their status. But there are some, if you, if you look at any article, I'll show you guys later how the talk page works. You can actually see this article used to be a good or featured article. And it's been, in 2014, it was removed from that list because of x, y, z reason. And so these are not permanent um, demarcations. They're very much a, a moment in time, a snapshot of a moment in time. Yeah, so um, part of the work that we do at Wiki Education is work with instructors to identify those gaps in their field and to help students um, contribute to fill them. And one of the, probably the more well-known problems in Wikipedia is the gender gap. Um, not only just the fact that only anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of the contributors are women, but also the content on Wikipedia is not reflective of women or minority issues. So one example of that is looking at the number of biographies that exist on Wikipedia. And when you actually categorize all the biographies online, only 17 percent of them are about women. Um, and that's just, I think, ridiculous. We know that women are 50% of the world and have been a part of every single major historical moment, and yet we're not capturing that information. And so um, part of the work that we do at Wikied is partner with academic organizations like the National Women's Studies Association to have their students think about that gap that exists in their field and actually make a, a manageable difference in closing that gap. And so I'm just going to give you guys a really quick case study about some of the work that our women's studies students have done as a way just to visualize kind of like what Doug was getting into earlier, what exactly do students do when they do the Wikipedia project. So yeah, the idea is to replace a research paper or some kind of writing assignment in your course with the Wikipedia project. We provide all the scaffolding. I'll get into that later. Um, students, this is very much a service learning assignment for students. Um, they are also gaining research and writing skills. They're thinking about what is an annotated bibliography? How do I put that work and that effort onto Wikipedia? Um, they're interacting with the Wikipedia community, with each other. We build peer review into our assignment template. And at the end of the day, the students understand that this is not busy work. This is not a paper that they're another paper they're going to write that's going to go to their professor and get graded one time and then put in the recycling bin at the end of the term. Um, and I think that's really powerful motivation for students, and I'll get into the motivation in a little bit also. So one of the things that we do is help um, students write biographies on Wikipedia. That's great. Um, that's part of that, trying to close that gap of the 16%, and if you actually look 
a year ago it was 16.7% of the biographies were of women and now it's 173 So we are slow and steady um, making progress on that. But it's not just about biographies. Um, students also take content on Wikipedia and improve it. So this is an example of the unisex public toilet. If you look at the Wikipedia article before the student worked on it, it was very much focused on the US. Um, and the students in this course that worked on it actually added entire sections about legislation around the world and their, um, their policies around unisex public bathrooms. And I think that it's not just, our, the work that we do isn't just let's improve access for Americans and for English speakers. We want to help improve access to knowledge for people all across the world um, and learning about, about issues that are potentially important to them. Um, also, a lot of the work that our students do is is provide access to that research literature, right? So not just adding citations, but adding summaries of the work that happens in a citation. And so this article about toxic masculinity, um, this is what it looked like in January of 2017. So that's only a few months ago. Um, and we all, I think, have very much heard this term. It's very much a part of like the cultural discussions these days. And so we had students in a class um, work to improve it, and they added a significant number of citations, but they also added a significant amount of content around um, the cultural implications and why this exists, um, why it's important to talk about. And I think, so I just went and took the screenshot yesterday, and I was looking at the article history, and someone actually just um, September 1st, so five days ago, deleted the entire article and wrote, this does not exist. Toxic masculinity is not a real thing and should not have a Wikipedia page. If it were up to me, I would delete it, but it isn't, so live with it. Uh. And so that's crazy to me. Someone came in and deleted the Wikipedia page. Lucky for us, we save every edit ever made on every article so we can just revert that edit and put it back to the way that it should be. Um, but this article, since that revision was made on September 1st, has been viewed 2,361 times. So I think. Part of this is also accepting and acknowledging like three, almost 3,000 people have read this article and could potentially have seen this is not a real thing. But instead, when they go to that page, when they type it into the Google search bar, when they get redirected to Wikipedia, they're able to access well-referenced, accurate, reliable information about the topic. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so 68% of the students that we work with um, are women, but that is very much a representation of the number of women who are usually attend American universities. But we're very proud because that is significantly higher than the 10 to 15 percent of normal editorship that exists on Wikipedia. And so we are definitely trying to bring diverse voices to the content. So in the fall of 2016, we did a student <coughs> learnings outcome study where we actually hired a researcher to work with um, for eight months, and he did a pre and post test survey. He did focus groups. Um, he worked with instructors and students. And we just wanted to know what was a student experience doing the Wikipedia project, and what was the instructor perspective on this. And um, the major findings, Dr. Zach McDowell, the whole report is available online. All the data is open. If you have an interest in looking at the data, it's all open. Um, you can let me know at the end. I can send you more details. Um, students reported spending more time on this project than on a typical assignment. And I don't mean that as like, this was five times as much work. It was more the students felt like they invested more time in it themselves. Their perception of their time spent was high value, high time commitment. Um, students were more satisfied with their work when thinking about a traditional assignment. They, they very much knew that this was not busy work. They knew that this work had value. Um, they had a perceived value, uh, transferable skills. So not just thinking about, okay, I wrote a term paper, but what does that mean for my career? But okay, now I know how to edit Wikipedia. I know how to write for a public audience. I know how to do things that maybe I hadn't known that I knew how to do before, but this assignment helped me understand that I can do it. Um, they had shifted, the students reported that they had shifting perceptions of Wikipedia as a source of information and knowledge on the internet in general. And um, they were motivated to contribute beyond getting a grade, which I think is really great. Um, this is a direct quote from one of the focused groups. So it's, it's very much um, in spoken English. So this is a student who's quoted as saying, I found the assignment less daunting. Like when the professor assigns me a 10 page research paper or something, I have trouble getting myself to do it sometimes. Just because I'm like, 
why? But this, I was like, I'm contributing something bigger, and it's public. So I felt more motivation to go in and edit it or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think that that really captures how students feel. Like they do, they do, they understand the value of the work. They understand why it matters. They understand that they're making a difference, um, and they understand that there is an audience beyond their instructor who's going to access this work. Um, so another really fun example of an article that a student wrote that kind of illustrates this engagement by students is this article about the digital divide in Canada. This article didn't exist before the student worked on it. Um, they published it in December of 2016, so this was a fall 2016 course. The student worked over on it for a couple of months. And I mean, the article is incredible. I definitely recommend that you take a look. But while I was going to find some really engaging um, examples of student work, I looked at the article history for this article, and what I found is that, so the article was published in December of 2016, this is when the student moved their draft live, and that same student username, Andrew, that's his username, um, came back in April of 2017, so months after the class ended and the assignment was over, and made minor grammatical changes to the article. And I think, again, this just illustrates any other assignment that you give your students, they're not, I'm sorry, they're not picking it up four months later and like re-looking at your comments and they're gonna go rework their draft and they're gonna edit it with the great, you know, that's just not the reality of student experience. But with the Wikipedia project, there's a different sense of engagement and commitment and wanting to make sure that the work that they're doing is, is right and looks good and is professional. And I think that that is a really fun illustration of that engagement. Um, so we did a, 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 like, give us three words that describe Wikipedia in the pre and post test for the student learning outcomes survey. And um, the, you know, before this assignment, students said that Wikipedia was informative, but unreliable. It was helpful and useful, but also confusing. It was interesting. It was all these interesting words. And then at the end of the assignment, this is, I think, really fun because we just, this is what it became, they decided that Wikipedia was reliable that they found that Wikipedia was a collaborative space, that it was useful, helpful, accessible, and that it was simple and informative. And I think that this also helps illustrate kind of the student experience and the way that they engage in these projects. So I wanna do a really quick activity with you guys before we get into too much more um, of me just presenting at you. Um, and I'm just gonna have your tables do this. So I have a, a, a set of phrases and you as a group are gonna discuss what this Wikipedia is or is not. So the first one, for example, is an encyclopedia. Um, so we, you, at your table in theory, if this was your word, which it's not, because this is my example one, um, you have a discussion at your table about is Wikipedia an encyclopedia, and what does that mean? And so I have a whole bunch of terms. I'm just gonna drop off, let's see, one, two, yeah, I think I do two at each table, and um, you guys should just chat about it, and we'll, take five minutes to, to have a break, you can run to the bathroom if you need to, or get some water and chat with your team. And, um, oh, I ran out of, almost have, you guys are gonna get one. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, and then we'll come back and I'll have everyone share what their group thought about. <laughs> Let's uh, pull, pull everybody back in. <laughs> Thank you for breaking out into groups, I appreciate that. I hope that some of you actually talked about the words in front of you. Um, okay, so we're just going to go through, and I'm going to go through, and if it's your word, I want you to share some of your group's perceptions of whether Wikipedia is or is not peer-reviewed. Who had that one? Did you talk about it? We did. Yeah. Um, well, the example you used where another editor came in and deleted the page is a sort of review by peers. Yeah. Uh, but it's not, I don't think, the type of peer review we used to do in professional journals. Like this. But, and, but there's a community that watches yeah. and uh, helps to regulate the opportunities. Definitely. I think it's interesting because like in academia, we think of peer review as a review of our peers, of people who also have a PhD in my field, who possibly potentially are the only other three people on the planet who actually know about <laughs> the thing that I'm writing about, and they say it's great. But on Wikipedia, yeah. that peer review process is very different. It's not so much about my academic peer. It's more, do you have the status on Wikipedia to, to you know, revert that edit? Do you, ha do you know how to do the formatting where you can review and say, oh, well, your formatting is messed up. So the idea of peer review is very different. Yeah. Okay, so is it editable by anyone? 
Who had that one? We had it. Yeah. Uh, well, we just, yeah, it was kind of a, yes, it is editable by anyone, but with the same kind of, I guess, qualifications. Yeah. But then also, you know, does that, who has access to the internet in the world? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, who who has the capacity to write and, and who has the confidence to write and um, the time? It's so right, it yeah, is, yeah, in yeah. theory, yes, it is an open source resource, but there are lots of weird caveats in terms of in terms of that. That's a good good catch. Um, is it a social network? I mean, this is an interesting one for people who don't know anything about Wikipedia. That, that, that was ours, too. Um, I think that's well, in the in the uh, common parlance of social network, we felt not because mm -hmm. it's not a place to just post whatever you're dealing in any moment. But for people who are interested in a particular topic, they can connect with one another, and it's a social relationship. To That's a really good. Yeah. So, if you look on like one of the Wikipedia policy pages, one of them is a page called Wikipedia is not, and it has a list of all the things Wikipedia is not, and social network is one of them. Except in theory, it actually is because you have all these people who get to know each other online, who they see their usernames, they're editing some of our content. We, I actually just got back from Montreal a few weeks ago. There was the World Wikipedia Conference. It's called Wikimania. A couple thousand people in the same space who all edit Wikipedia. So it is a very social experience if you become a part of the community, but it's not actually a social network. Oh, in the way that we pages. I bet those are the <laughs> yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, is Wikipedia neutral? I think this is a really yeah. great one. Who had this one? We had three. Yeah. What do you think? No. No. <laughs> Why do you think that? Because it's what is talked about and what is emphasized is it, there's always a bias there. Yeah, and we did just talk about right all these content gaps, and if those exist, then how could it be neutral? But there is again a policy on Wikipedia that says Wikipedia is neutral. So there is a goal that the community has established, which is how can we neutrally discuss and talk about everything on, you know, in, under the sun. But then in academia, we know that that's not really humanly possible to be truly neutral. And so there's a really interesting kind of di uh, not dichotomy, but just an interesting tension there around this goal of trying to present work in a way that is weighted properly, is neutral in the capacity, but then also, you know, humans are, are imperfect creatures. Um, there's a policy kind of behind the scenes which is called do or undo weight. And this, again, most people don't know that this exists. But um, Wikipedia has a policy that says if you write about a topic, um, the way that you write about it should be reflective of the way that the academy discusses the topic in terms of the weight of the information you provide. So for example, you know, there's the, uh, uh, Okay, this is I silly, I can't remember. The square earth people, flat earth, the flat earth people. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, my brain just broke. Um, so if you look at the, the Wikipedia article about the earth, there's no reference to the fact that there's a small cohort of individuals who think that the earth is flat because the scientific consensus is very much that the earth is round. Um, again, if you look at climate change, there, there might be a small section about climate change denial as, as a small part of the academy, but it's not 50% of the article. It's, it's supposed to be a reflection of the 3% or 1% of the academy who thinks that way, and, and maybe why. And it's not to say that then there couldn't be an article about the flat earth hypothesis or about climate change denial, um, but those, re those research resources should reflect the way that we're talking about that in the academic setting. So I think that's also kind of like an attempt at neutrality. It's how can we give weight to the things that we've agreed uh, are real? I don't know. OK, is Wikipedia research? This is an interesting one. Who had this one? We did. Yeah. <clears throat> it was a summation of research. Yeah. It's a tertiary review of secondary literature, 100%. Love that. Easy, quick and easy. <laughs> All right, is Wikipedia a democracy? Who had this one? Come on, ladies, yeah. I think we had a Yeah, 
yeah. I mean, that gets, that gets at it pretty well. It's funny because when we think from the outside about Wikipedia, you think, yeah, it's a, it's a democratic collection of building knowledge. But when you look at the policies, there's actually a page that says Wikipedia is not a democracy. And that's just to reflect the fact that like you still have to gain some status to be an administrator on Wikipedia. And those administrators are not awarded by a democratic vote of everyone across the world saying that you're the one. Like, it is very much a small group of people who are making decisions about how this works. And again, I think if you look at the list of administrators on Wikipedia, like 95% of them are men. Most of them are white. And you know, is that a democracy when you have you know a really small reflection of the population and the people who are making decisions about how all this information is presented? <laughs> Not necessarily. So it's it's a complicated kind of way from thinking about it from the outside versus like being in it in the trenches. Okay, is Wikipedia free? Yeah. You guys had some good ones. Um, well, it doesn't cost anything to yeah. hop on there and look into it. Um, but it does, Wikipedia does ask for donations on an annual basis, I think, or more regularly than that. So, and I'm not sure where those, that money's going. Um, uh, in a way, it's wonderfully free, but something's got to give. Yeah. Um, and there's there's a group like you're part of um, that requires financing also, I yeah. assume. Um, so I don't understand the architecture of it. No, but, that's fine. Um, for the normal user, effectively, yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the core tenets of Wikipedia as a resource is that it's free. It will, it'll never, you'll never have to pay to access Wikipedia. You'll never have to pay for an account. Um, but you do have all this other, like, okay, well, you need to have a internet access, and that costs money. You need to have a device. That costs money. And then there are, you know, Wikipedia. So the Wikimedia Foundation is a nonprofit that powers Wikipedia, which I really love that language that they have developed. Um, they, have, they have half of their staff are lawyers who are working to make sure that the content is following all the proper laws. The other half of their staff um, are software developers who are making sure that every edit ever made on every article is saved in every language across the world forever. So, you know, that is kind of an interesting way to think about that all that costs something. And where does that financing come from? That two dollars a year that, that you donate, yeah, they they like they'll open that up usually only once a year, um, only for a week, and they have a, a goal that they want to meet to be able to keep the services in check, and they usually meet that goal within like two or three days, because people do recognize like I can give my three dollars and make sure that this stays free, but then there are some other grants that the Wikimedia Foundation receives from other entities and stuff. Okay, I think we're almost done. Is Wikipedia a soapbox? Yeah, yes. and you guys are leaving, you but... Yes. You, have so <laughs> you said yes sometimes for some people. Yeah, it shouldn't be, but it is. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's a, a kind of a tension that Wikia tries to work with, too, because we want to have our students understand that their work is advocacy, that when you have a women's studies course talking about rape culture and toxic masculinity, that is advocacy in a way, but there's a difference between providing access to information and putting your own you know, a uh, soapbox spin on it all. So that's a really interesting tension that we kind of work with too. Okay, I think uh, we'll, just, we'll skip the last couple. It's not technically a dictionary. If you want to know, but everybody uses it as one. You probably figured that out. And complete, I hope everyone understands that Wikipedia is not complete. It's part of the reason why we're here. Okay, so I'm going to just spend a couple minutes talking a little bit more broadly about information literacy and digital citizenship. And I think that this is really important because this is a buzzword in academia right now. People are talking about it. A lot of instructors that I meet recognize that these are skills and terms that they <coughs> want to talk to their students about, but they don't know how to engage them. I think Wikipedia is a great way to do that. So um, I actually just looked up on Wikipedia what digital citizenship <laughs> is in order to get a definition using it as a dictionary, even though I'm not supposed to. Um, so according to Wikipedia, a digital citizen is a person who utilizes information technology in order to engage in society, politics, and government. Um, and then if you kind of read forward, the process of becoming a digital citizen goes beyond simple internet activity. This usually occurs alongside the promotion of equal economic opportunity, increased political participation, and civic duty. And I think this is really interesting because it's not most of us don't use the internet in this way. Most of us just consume. Um, we, we don't think on an everyday basis about what, how to promote equal economic opportunity in the way that we access the web. Um, 
And when we want our students to kind of understand these terms, Wikipedia plays a really interesting space where they can kind of learn how to consume, but also how to produce for others. Um, and we are not, we in this room, but also me, I'm, we're not the only one asking these questions about what, you know, how do you engage in the world? What capacity do the students have? Um, the Stanford History Education Group, I don't know if any of you guys have read this study. They did a study, um, they released it in November of 2016, so it's a very interesting uh, time in all of our lives. But they wanted to know um, what students, the capacity of students was to, to see and acknowledge fake news, um, paid advertising, and so they did three studies with middle, high school, and college age students, and um, they found some pretty bleak results. Um, basically, the students at all levels were not able to tell native advertising from um, curated content. They were not able to identify real news from fake news. They were not able to identify um, fake news websites. Um, they were not able to identify pretty much anything that we hope and think our students can do. We assume that they can, um, but what we found is they absolutely cannot. And so um, the, their finding here, overall, young people's ability to reason about the information on the internet can be summed up in one word, bleak. And I think that that's really sad because this is a very important skill for students to understand. And um, what I take away when I read their study, and I recommend you go, it's a pretty short, um, you know, synopsis of the work that they've done, you should definitely go read it. The, our students are digitally savvy. They know how to use Instagram, they know how to use Snapchat, they know how to access Wikipedia, but they're not digitally literate and they don't know what those skills are. And that's because most people don't know how to give them those skills. Um, and I think my uh, synopsis here is that in order to become digital citizens, students need information literacy skills. And I think that um, working with the Wikipedia project is a great way to provide that for your students. Um, and when we surveyed our instructors in that fall 2016 study, 97% of those surveyed said that the Wikipedia assignment was better at teaching information literacy for their students than our traditional assignment. Uh, because specifically they were carving out time in their classes to have these discussions with their students. Whereas in a traditional assignment, they didn't force themselves to have to have those conversations. Um, so the American Library Association, if you guys don't know about it, um, is great. They have some really great information literacy frameworks that we at WikiEd take very seriously. Um, and those are pretty simple. Students should be able to determine the extent of information needed when they evaluate a topic. Um, they should be able to access the needed information in an effective way, in an efficient way, so in their library. They should be able to evaluate those sources that they find critically. They should then be able to incorporate that information into the existing knowledge base. And they should be able to use the information to accomplish a purpose, right? So not just to write a paper, but to actually help better explain a topic. And at the end of the day, students who are information literate can understand the economic, legal, and social issues surrounding the use of information and access and use that information ethically and legally. And I think, for me, knowing what I know about the Wikipedia project, which I'm going to go into in more in depth, every single step of this process is very much how students contribute to Wikipedia. They pick a topic, they evaluate the quality of that content as it exists on Wikipedia, they go to their librarian, they access sources that will help them fill out the gaps that they've identified, they go to draft work that will help hit those gaps, they go to move that work live, um, and this process is very purposeful, very thoughtful, and uh, very much a part of this work. And I'm actually just going to turn over a few minutes to Corliss, who's in the room, who's a librarian on campus who has supported multiple of the courses that we've worked with and who's also helped librarians in other departments understand how to better support courses. So Carlos, if you want to come come and chat for a few minutes about your work. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. And I'm going to send around, I don't know, this is very non-digital in the send around business part. <laughs> do, do you want the I'd like to go mic? without it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to sit down. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's actually done at the beginning. Uh, Silly me. Um, I hope everybody can hear me because the uh, microphones and I don't seem to get along. Um, it, it's really great to be able to be here. The library is uh, very much a supporter of these kinds of assignments because, um, as uh, um, Samantha was saying, it's an important part of information literacy, not just for students to be able to do the research, but for them to be able to integrate it into something and use, um, 
use the information that they've got and uh, ideally to create information as well. And that gives them a better sense of how information is created all around, which I think is very important. Um, I want to reiterate what um, um, uh, Douglas and Samantha have said. Assignment design is really important. Um, this is not just sort of a quickie substitute for your 8 to 10 page paper. It really takes infrastructure. It takes work. Um, it's uh, not just, you know, you don't just sort of show them a couple of, of videos and then, okay, off we go. Writing for Wikipedia is really different. Doing the research, you have to do it a certain way. And doing the writing, it's, it's you know, a, a certain type of writing. So you really want to spend the time to scaffold something into your, uh, into your class and, and um, we can help you talk about how to do that. But that's very important. You want to do it right also because you're sort of responsible. You know, you're creating public information. And so uh, this isn't like um, students are tempted to do as we did in middle school, you know, take the first three things and write something quickly. It's not, it's not going to be like that. Um, you don't want to, you can't really expect to go from zero to um, students writing full on articles in one semester. It's been done. But um, really, a lot of work goes into that. It might be better to do a, a smaller assignment first. You know, get your feet wet, get students' feet wet, and then sort of move on to something else. Like um, the integrative biology class, you know, did a small seminar and then moved that into sort of a, a larger situation. So I want to um, really emphasize that the um, uh, assignment design is really important. So about the library, what can the library do? Uh, I want to mention a couple of things that have come up. Uh, the um, uh, library is having an Art Plus Feminism um, Edit-a-thon, I don't know if I mentioned that to you or not, in March, and we're sponsoring that. It's part of a global project, the Art Plus Feminism uh, project, and so um, that's something that you can encourage your students to come to. March 6th, I forgot to bring the flyers, but if I'm sending my business card around, email me and I'll send you the information. Um, we're also having a um, media manipulation and fake news workshop the end of September, not how to make fake news, but hopefully <laughs> how to, how to uh, uh, work against and recognize fake news. So that's something else to look for in the library calendar. So how do we support, I'm going to borrow your, oh, yeah. Go for it. if I can, okay, this case, yeah. um, how does the library support these classes? First of all, we support them in the way we do O'Pompey, um, the way we do all classes with research, which is, okay. to help you. well, I'm not sure where I am here. If you just command T, you open a new tab. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, never. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me help. Okay, sorry. No, no, it's okay. But you, you want to go to the library website? website? Just want the website, yeah. Sorry. Oh. Um, so the library supports any research assignment on, right. on campus by a uh, um, um, teaching your students how to do the research. So let's see, this is okay. So um, all departments on campus have a librarian liaison. You might be sitting next to one uh, right now. There are several librarians here. And we all support research assignments. Um, the traditional thing to do is uh, a workshop. Many of us use um, software to make these library guides that stay up online all semester so that you can, um, students you know, don't have to memorize things. We can sort of look at, okay, we're looking for finding articles. Uh, what is this thing about Google? How do I manage citations? Where do I go for help? So the tr traditionally, you uh, might have a workshop, a library guide, and then uh, individual follow-up with individual appointments. So a student can email the instructor, so our email addresses are on these things, um, but also, um, also, the library website, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, there's a lot of different ways for students to get help. They can drop by a library. They can um, use the 24-7 chat service, which honestly is one of the best things ever. So when students feel like doing their research at 2 in the morning or whatever, there's a librarian there that they can chat with. Um, there's an appointment service, and um, you can email and things. But those are sort of the main ways to get a hold of us. So all students, all students, all faculty, all staff should be encouraged to contact the library for help. Okay. So um, we can also work, we also work with classes in other ways. If there's something that your class needs to special, it's not like it can only be this way. But these are these are things that we do on a routine basis. Okay. And we support all, all, all the um, disciplines on campus. Um, and you can either contact your librarian, uh, if, you, if you're already working with your subject librarian, or, um, let's see, it was over here. You can go to the Find Your Librarian link, and here's a long list of disciplines on campus and the librarians that support 
your discipline. Or you can email me if you have questions. Sometimes people think like, well, it's in this department, but it's really this subject and so on. Just, just um, email one of us and we'll help you figure it out. So um, we, will, we can do that for you. We also, um, one of the things that uh, I want to re-emphasize is that the library spends millions of dollars a year on these databases that we uh, have for you. There are over 1,200 databases. And these are things that people at the academy have access to that people who are not in the academy don't have access to. People can come onto campus and use them, but they can't get remote access to them. So this is another way of making this information public. Um, even if um, the uh, uh, person off the street isn't always going to be able to read these articles and understand them even if they got access, but again, um, distilling this into something like Wikipedia is a great way of, of making this information public. Um, does anybody have any questions? So we do this for classes with any research assignment, including the PD assignment. Um, and if you have other questions about ways we can support you, this isn't the end of it all. This, this is um, sort of the standard. Okay, well, um, several of us are still here till the end, so let us know if you have any questions and the business part is going around. Thank you. Um, I would encourage everybody to work with their librarian at all times. They're the best resource ever. Okay. Um, sorry, let me get back to my slides. I somehow did your things here. <coughs> Okie dokie. Yeah, okay, so then what can Wiki Education provide you? Um, it's a whole plethora of amazing resources that we have. I just pre stuff this in my pocket. So like I said, um, our main goal is to help you build the assignment that fits for your class. So at a very basic level, the assignment follows you know, three, again, very basic steps. Students actually create accounts on Wikipedia. Um, they take trainings that we have created that teach them about the Wikipedia community, how to make an edit. Um, they're taught how to evaluate a Wikipedia article for quality. So not just, oh hey, you know, if you're going to use Wikipedia, go to the bottom and click on those research resources at the bottom. But we actually teach students, okay, what does that look like? How do you evaluate those research resources? Why does it matter if they're, if they're from the last five years, the last 15 years? Um, and also about the anatomy of the Wikipedia page and all the things that are happening there. And then the students eventually are asked to, to make a contribution to actually improve the content of an article in their field on Wikipedia. So um, we have an assignment template that scaffolds this work for the instructors. It's fully customizable. Um, this is, but it does include a lot of the best practices that we found. We've worked, we've done this France program for over six years. We've worked with thousands of students um, and hundreds of different instructors. And so we do have a lot of really great content knowledge around how to run these projects successfully in your classes. Um, so our basic assignment template follows this type of timeline. The students create their accounts, they take the introductory trainings in the first assignment. On the second assignment, they learn how to evaluate the quality of a Wikipedia article. Like I discussed, we can either pre-select a list of topics on Wikipedia that are relevant to your course. So if you're teaching a course in ethnic studies and, or, or specifically in history, in Roman history, we could find five articles about Roman history that are pretty good on Wikipedia that your students are assigned to read that are related to the content you're covering in class and they have to come to class with an evaluation of how does this differ from our class discussions? What does Wikipedia get right? What do they get wrong? Are the research resources the same things that we're being assigned to read in class? Are they different? Why does that matter? Um, so again, diving into what Wikipedia kind of encompasses. And then the students are asked to pick a topic to work on for the rest of the term. We provide group support for group work if you have a group assignment in your course. Um, the students are asked to work on a bibliography, to evaluate the article that they've picked, think about the sources that they want to use to help improve that article, to actually draft their work. Um, we have trainings every week that help them learn to achieve what this next learning um, objective is. And then eventually they're asked to actually peer review each other's work. Like I said, this is built into our basic assignment template. And it's not really until they have received that peer review feedback that they've worked on their draft for a couple of weeks that they actually move it live onto Wikipedia. Um, so our goal is that every student moves their work live. I think that that is the best case scenario. But if you're uncomfortable, if you have a student who's uncomfortable, we don't, it does not have to be required. Um, so it's very much could be optional depending on, on you know, the comfort of you and your students. Um, and then like the final week, they make some final changes to their live article. 
potentially write a reflection paper or do an in-class presentation where they're discussing their work, um, doing their own analysis of their learning, and we have scaffolded support for that as well. So my job specifically is the instructional design. So I do all the outreach events like this where I talk to new instructors, but the bulk of my work is actually one-on-one -on -one meetings on telephone calls, Skype, Google Hangout, where I talk to you about what class you're teaching, what your learning objectives are, how many students you're working with, what level of students you, know, you think you'll have in your class, and what kind of assignment we could make fit um, to help you achieve the objectives that you have in your class. Um, and we provide this all free of charge. So we also have a series of online tools and resources. Um, I have some of the handouts, the, the case studies handout is our main like instructor handout. But we also, if you run the assignment with us, we have this amazing editing Wikipedia brochure. And so this is a companion to all of our online trainings. We will mail you a physical copy, one for every student in your class, so that they have this at their desk while they're going through the project. It walks them through how to complete the project. It references the online trainings. It references their library, and it references their course resources. Um, and then on top of that, we have some a really amazing subject specific resources. So this is a very, our assignment template is any course in any industry in any field can run this project. This is very broad, how to edit Wikipedia. Um, but what if you're, oops, what if you're in a sociology classroom? Why is the work that your student's doing gonna be a little bit different? Or if you're a chemistry instructor, why is the work that your student's doing, what, why is the research that they're gonna be doing different? Um, what if you're a political science, women's studies? What if you just want your students to write biographies on Wikipedia? What are the specific rules about biographies that your students need to know? These are all available digitally, but again, we can also mail you a physical copy, one for every student in your class. Um, and then we have the training libraries. So we have an instructor orientation. So um, at the end of the day today, well really probably tomorrow, I will follow up with all of you if you have RSVP'd um, with Doug on the American Cultures like RSVP page. I'll send you links to all of our resources. The very first one is going to be our instructor orientation. So it will kind of, when you have your own time and you're like ready to think about this in a more thorough manner, when I'm not in the room with you, the orientation will walk you through the research project again. It will walk you through our resources. It will help you start thinking about your implementation plan. Um, and then you can contact me and say, okay, I think I want it move forward with this in this class at this time in this semester let's talk more and then we also have a, a series of student trainings so these are broad how to edit wikipedia and also very specific let's talk about plagiarism let's talk about what kinds of sources you should be using um, let's talk about peer review and we assign your students to complete these trainings as part of the template assignment um, again our goal is to kind of help with the wikipedia stuff you are still the content expert in your course so again, if your students are editing about, um, we have a genes and proteins, let's just imagine, genes and proteins. Like, I want my students to all work in groups to edit articles about proteins on Wikipedia. You're still the person who knows about proteins. I don't know anything about proteins. But I know a lot about how to make this work in your class. So we try and you know create a really good balance with supporting this work. Um, we also, like I said, we're, we're providing the Wikipedia expertise. And then we have a really incredible learning management tool. We call it the dashboard. And this is really our, um, our main piece of support that you'll use to run this assignment in your class. Um, it's an online course management tool that helps instructors track the work that their students do on Wikipedia. Um, it's custom built. We built this ourselves. And basically, every course we support creates a course page in the dashboard. This is a, a sample course. I'll just like zoom in a little bit. Um, and the custom, so we also have an assignment timeline. This is a course that was at Berkeley and Nanette Coleman um, in doing a project on privacy. And all of our students created and updated articles in Wikipedia related to privacy. Um, so this is just an example of the assignment timeline. Again, walks your students through each week, what they're supposed to be completing, if they should be taking a training. And we can customize the timeline to actually be thematically relevant to your class. So her students are reading the Wikipedia article about information privacy and then doing the evaluation using the guidelines that we provided. Um, they're making a couple of practice edits. They're you know, thinking about their topic. They're um, probably going to be working related to something in information privacy. And then they're going to be annotating their sources, drafting their work. 
um, expanding their draft, completing the peer review, taking the relevant trainings as they come up. And this is, again, so she's done some work to customize the timeline, but the, the template is there for you, the week-by-week -week breakdown of what your students should be completing. Um, the assignment, at a minimum, around six weeks we recommend. At a maximum, it could be a semester-long project. Um, our goal is that your students in a semester can contribute a really significant amount of content, and I would say the majority of our students do. So that's definitely possible. Um, don't think it's not, because it definitely is. So I'll, I'll show you. Um, the best thing about this tool is it can help you track your students. So if you're logged in as the instructor, you can see your student first and last names. Um, everybody can be as anonymous as they want on Wikipedia. We recommend your students be as anonymous as they want, but you still have to be able to evaluate their work. So I'm looking at this from incognito mode, so I can't, I'm an admin, so I can see student identifying information, but um, the publicly available access to your student's username is, again, as anonymous as they want. So classy blue powder, cookie stan, it's Gabe. I'm like, okay, maybe this person's name is Gabriel. Maybe it's Gabriella. I don't know. But you know, you can be as, as anonymous as you want. So as an instructor, you can see all the students enrolled in your course. You can see their progress that they've made through the training modules. We can see the date and timestamp of when they completed them. We can also see edit summaries of all their recent work on Wikipedia. So each time they click save, we pull an edit summary for you into this tool so we can see that the student added 66 characters in May and that you know they just made, they changed a little bit of the citation or whatever in that specific edit. And so as your students go through the, the, the project, you can check in every day, every week, see what their status is, how they're doing um, using the, the students tab. We also have a way at the end of the semester where you can actually see the cumulative work that your students have done in improving the article. So this article about connected toys is a new article. So that's an article that the students created as part of the work. But we can also see the articles that the students helped improve. Um, and if we, I'm just going to pick one. If we dive in, we can see that there is a couple different students who worked in this topic, and we can actually look at the authorship highlighting. So each student username is given a color code, and then um, if the internet is, is good in here, um, it'll, in theory, highlight the information that each student contributed to the article so that you can actually evaluate at the end of the term, okay, here's exactly what my students did on this assignment. I don't know, I said three. I'm still just thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh, here we go. So we can see that they added you know, information about certain countries and their privacy laws. Um, we can see all the content that each individual student as part of this group project contributed um, so that at the end of the term, again, you can say, okay, my students did contribute some really amazing content, um, which is great. And this is just like a behind the scenes analysis of the words that existed on the page before and after and we were able to highlight. I don't know all the details. Um, <laughs> yeah, so these students did an amazing job. And um, if they uploaded any images, we can also see the images that they've uploaded. And then the activity tab is kind of like a space where you can always pop in and just see what's happening in your class. So um, the online training for instructors orientation will walk you through some of this again. So you don't have to be like, I have to remember everything that Samantha's saying today. Um, yeah, and I can show you some more examples of student work. So, um, Nina, I'm just curious why yeah. the character count is important. Well, that's the number of, of characters, so like the actual words added. Right. So we track that. That's just why. Okay. Yeah. I'm so curious we, why it's important. Yeah. So we. I mean. So basically, we actually the way that Wikipedia works is that it's about characters added. So that's like each. If you wrote Samantha, it'd be like eight characters or whatever. But we um, we do a, a review for your whole class of, of words added, and we just have like a, an equation that we take the, the average characters and we divide it by seven or something, which is the average word length, and we're able to guesstimate for your class um, how much content they contribute as a whole. I think this is really important because some people who are applying for grants or receiving support, they want to be able to say, like, my students contributed 25,000 words. Their content has been viewed two and a half million times. In, in the month after the assignment. Um, and I think that this is a really powerful opportunity for instructors to see the impact of their students, but also for students to see the value of their work. Um, so we can actually go in and we can see like the articles that the students are working on. If we look at the edit summaries, 
we can see the page views that are happening on those articles at any given. Uh, it's, a, it's a month screenshot, the way that we work it here is the month around when students are contributing. So they can see like, while I've been working on this article about connected toys, which is a new article that didn't exist, it's been viewed almost 700 times in the past 30 days or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's fun. So yeah, we had students who create new articles. Again, so like this article about privacy and education is a new article that a student created. Um, we also have students who update existing articles. So another course at Berkeley um, that we supported, the students took this article about the Office for Human Research Protections and expanded it like really significantly into a full discussion of why that office is important into our governmental work. Um, so that's just another example. Uh, the toxic masculinity article. I had the the post canine one. So we can, if you weren't using our tools, let's just imagine that you were like, I'm going to run this assignment, but I don't need wiki education. I can do it myself, which I would not recommend. But if you did, um, you can actually like always look at the edit history of any article to see every version of the article that's ever existed. Um, and if you if you click on the date, you can actually see the version of the article as it existed on that date. I don't know if you guys knew about this. This is on the um, the view history tab on every Wikipedia page. Um, you can also click the user page of the people who are contributing and read about who that person is if they have decided to put self-identifying information. Um, and then you can see the edit summary of like kind of what they're contributing. So what, what has this person done in this specific edit where they removed two characters or added 157 characters? And that's just how Wikipedia tracks its contents and characters. You know, if students are like going to other articles and, and adding links to their articles? Like, how do you track that activity? Yeah, so that activity is tracked still um, on the dashboard. So in the, on the students tab, you'd be able to see that. But it's, it's, so that's an interesting one where like, maybe they only added four characters, but then what they did was add a link, an internal link. So that's where the edit summaries are important because it's not just about, oh, four characters, maybe that was, you know, not relevant, but actually it might be really relevant. Um, so on the students tab of your course page, as your students are going through the process, you can peek in and you can see like, okay, well they added, you know, a couple characters here. What did they do? And they, you know, removed, they did some copy editing. But I mean, if they're actually going to other articles outside of the ones they're editing to create links to their content. So that was, they, they would then edit that article in order to create that link and that, and that will be captured for okay. you. Yeah. Anything so, they touch gets captured. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, and then I think... So what, the way that our tools work is we encourage students to use the talk pages, which are um, the behind the scenes place where the community discusses the content as it will exist on the article space. Um, and so we actually encourage students to use the talk pages to complete their peer review and to draft their bibliography. And so you can actually see the students working on the peer review. Hey, this is a person in your class. Here are my comments from my peer review um, for your draft that you've posted. Um, here's the potential bibliography that the students are thinking about working with. So we want the students not just drafting their work and moving it live, but engaging in the infrastructure that exists on Wikipedia. And part of that is learning that there's a talk page, learning what, what kind of information is usually held on talk pages. So this is a new article, so there's not a lot of infrastructure that's been created there. But if you go to like, an, let's go to the live article. If you go to another talk page, you can see there's a post that our tools make that notify other users that the student is in a wiki education supported class working on this content. But then also you can see if it's on any, you know, related to any wiki projects, what that wiki project has rated the quality of the article as. So that's where like a featured article, you'll know it's a featured article by looking at the talk page and seeing the tags that the community has provided um, behind the scenes. Will you be able to see the top page activity in the dashboard? Yeah, so if we go if we go into the dashboard, let's see if we, um, I think it was this. Um, if we, so the, the way that our tool works is um, we track in the dashboard the 10 most recent edits, but you can always go to the full contribution history. But we can see that this student was working in their sandbox, that they were working live on a couple different article spaces. Um, that they were, again, working in their sandbox. And so when the week is that they're completing peer review, you'll see summaries of the peer review on the talk pages brought up under the student work. But because this is an assignment that's been completed and the students have progressed past that point in the assignment, what you're seeing is the live work that they've done on the live article. Um, but you can always go to the full contribution history of any student on Wikipedia, and you can see um, all the different spaces that they're working on. So the talk page, the talk page, 
I'll just zoom in for you guys so you can see this. Um, working on the talk page, the talk page, the talk page, the talk page, and then a live article space, live article space. Um, but again, the, the way that the students tab works in our tool is supposed to be like a weekly check-in for the instructor. What are my students doing this week, the last 10 edits? Um, so if you are thinking that you don't have the capacity to check in every week, that's where the articles tab is great because then you can see the cumulative effort that they've done live. And you can always um, get links to the student user pages and their contributions from, from the from the talk, from the, sorry, from the dashboard. So it, it's a very, it, it probably is a little overwhelming thinking about all these things if you didn't know that these all existed, but that's why we try and scaffold the learning for you as the faculty and then also for your students. Yeah. So we can actually like look at the, the user. We can look at, I'll just type in her sandbox. Save it. There, the sandbox. So the sandbox is the draft space on Wikipedia. So we recommend students draft all their work in their sandboxes. Their sandboxes are linked from the timeline, or linked from their course page. They they learn about sandboxes in the training. They learn how to edit in sandboxes in the training. And then they're actually asked to draft their work to practice the formatting and all of that on Wikipedia in the sandbox before they move it live. Um, and then if you look at the talk page, Again, that's a lot of times where the peer review happens. So if, for example, if you're tracking the, the, um, on the students tab the recent edits, what will come up is like user talk forward slash sandbox. It's a talk page of the sandbox. And then it will say added 500 words or whatever for their peer review. What other questions do you guys have? I'm sure there are more. Yeah, okay. So I know one thing that Corliss and I are thinking is maybe everybody can go around and say um, who you are and what department you're from. I'm really sorry I forgot to do that at the beginning. But if we don't mind maybe just sharing an idea about how you're thinking about incorporating Wikipedia as well, if, if you were thinking about it. Um, why don't we start here before you go? I know it's really big. Um, I'm not an instructor. My name is Jean Chang, and I'm the program manager of Just Space, the Academic Innovation Studio. So um, if you are an instructor, please come see me. We have a lot of uh, support in this space. We do a lot of programs and events that are specific to faculty, instructors, and uh, graduate students around teaching pedagogy, teaching with technology, various things. So we're happy to support this in other ways. And yeah. I gotta go to the meeting. I just realized something. Go, go. Oh, next person. Uh, my name is Priscilla. I'm from Brazil. This I am a professor. Uh, I'm doing a uh, postdoc in this time. Cool. Oh, cool. My colleague Helene uh, did her PhD in history here a few years ago. We were just here on campus for the digital history conference. I think it was in April or May. Did you were you here for that? I don't know. I think it was a history conference on campus. Yes, I, I, I arrived like uh, two weeks. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I was here one. Nice, awesome. What about your Hi, My name's Alan. I'm in biology, and. Uh, you know, just look at featured articles, how to do our uh, science base or biology specifically can be really weak. Um, there are very good alternative sites for similar content, like the Animal Diversity Web out of the University of Michigan. But those are scattered around, and I just would love to see a role for Wikipedia to become better at that and uh, consolidating some of uh, the advances that have been made in other spots. Cool. I think one thing I we did a year of science initiative um, in 2016, and so we focused. We found that social sciences and um, arts and humanities have a really natural fit to Wikipedia project because most of those courses have writing projects, but not as many science courses have instituted writing projects. So the Wikipedia project we tried to push. We did a whole push where we're like, we want more scientists to do this with our students. And what we found is that most of them were like, oh, but if you look at the two main terms of my discipline, there's already a content there. There's already a pretty good article. I'm like, okay, but what about all the ne the nuances and the specifications and every species that's ever existed and every gene and every protein and like, when you get into some of that more nuanced information, what you find is that Wikipedia is very much not a comprehensive research resource. And when you you're you know you're like, oh, but we know I know in the field that there are these other resources that exist, but most people aren't going to those web pages. But what you can do is you can link as a re 
from the Wikipedia article to read more. Here's an external reference that goes into this in a different, from a different perspective. Um, so it's kind of a fun way to think about how the information in the world is all connected. Yeah. My name is Amanda. I'm not an instructor, but I'm here on behalf of an instructor who asked me to kind of take a real solid uh, uh, and he's teaching in public health and city planning. Very cool. And thinking about an undergraduate course. Okay. Love it. That's very relevant. What about you guys in the back table? I'm David. I'm a librarian over in the Environmental Design Library. And, Hi, David. Um, a couple of faculty who are interested in incorporating Wikipedia cool. assignments into their classes. Well. Nice. Well, I would definitely be excited to talk more with you about that. Yeah. I'm Giselle Tomas, also in the library at the Media Resources Center, which was our DVD and streaming video collection. Cool. Um, so we work a lot with AC instructors and have noticed that there aren't very many Wikipedia articles on a lot of the educational or independent documentaries that we use. Yeah. So I think it would be a really interesting assignment. So we, we, I don't have it with me today, but we just created um, two new resources, one on editing Wikipedia articles about films, and one about writing Wikipedia articles about books. So if you do have instructors who, who have identified that there are films or documentaries or work that they want to have their students write about on Wikipedia, we have resources for that. Awesome. Yeah. What about you? I'm Adam Clemens. I'm the librarian for African and African American Studies. Very cool. um, and I'm, I, I was an information literacy coordinator and instructional librarian at the previous job. And so I did a lot of these five kind of pillars of information mm -hmm. literacy. And I'm particularly interested in evaluating resources. So how, um, how to get students to, to recognize you know, bad resources, fake ones, et cetera. I mean, I won't be doing as much of that here, mm -hmm. but I will be going into the classroom um, occasionally with students in those two areas as to um, yeah. the center and the department. So maybe I can use some of this. Uh, I know that that's one thing I, sh I, I have conversations with a lot of librarians who say, you know, I don't have the capacity to run an assignment. I often have these one-off moments where I go in and I have to cover every possible yeah, thing yeah. that the university provides for research, for research, but students use Wikipedia. I want to talk to them about it. How can I do that? How can I help them evaluate not just the research, but the way that they access most of their information? So we also have these um, editing, evaluating Wikipedia brochures. It's just a little tiny four-pager that breaks down the talk page, breaks down how to look at the research resources. Um, all of our material is free and open source, so you can download, you can hand it out, you can print it, you can provide everything. The, we have a sources and citations training, we have a evaluating Wikipedia training, again, all free, all open source, so you should feel free to use and take a look at them and in your own time, I'll give you this version. Um, decide if it's something that you could incorporate if you want to open up those conversations with students that you work with and with instructors. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I know Corliss, we already chatted with Corliss, so I'm gonna skip you. Um, next table, please. I'm Kyoko Shiosaki, and I'm also an uh, instruction and reference librarian, so I'm interested in these and what things talk about for evaluating sources. Your letter, so. <laughs> Very much. Awesome. You're on a library run. I'm Nicole Brown. I'm new here in the Instruction Services Division, so I work with all the librarians here. Um, I've only been here for two weeks, so yes, welcome. Thank you so much. Go Bears. Uh, I'm a lecturer in Global Studies, okay. and uh, there's a couple of classes that I'm considering using this possible. This has been enormously helpful, though. I've I can tell it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's really I'm, just the tip of the iceberg. I'm to sit and create an assignment that it's going to take a lot more work, which is mm -hmm. which is fine. Uh, I'll probably have to do it in the months mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, but the classes that I'm considering using, possibly using this yeah. assignment for, um, I'm an anthropologist in this interdisciplinary global studies um, program. So I teach uh, global poverty and practice. Course, and I think this could be very, very good for that uh, because, mm -hmm. because it's also got that emphasis on acting in the world, but okay. thinking about scholarship and the relationship between scholarship and acting in the world. So this would be just a beautiful fit. So I'm just all a word in my head trying to think, okay, how would that work for that class? Oh, wow. I'm teaching that class for 10 years. Wow. So that would be a big shift if I did that. Um, and then my India class, I teach an India class as well. Um, and questions that come up for me is, you know, how specific, because I, I 
see such the range. How yeah. specific should the topic be? And clearly that was that is an assignment in itself, is how do you come up with that mm -hmm. topic that you're yeah. okay with, that your student can work on, that's relevant for the fit with you. So it's been very useful. Those are good questions. So I have a couple thoughts. Um, one thing about this project, which is so great, is because because it's not, okay, everyone's going to write the same term paper, we're going to use two prompts, pick one of two prompts, we can really specialize what the students are interested in. So if you have students in your global poverty class who are from another country who want to write the article about um, certain legislation that exists in their home country or in a country that they're interested in, or if there's a nonprofit that they know of that they want to write the Wikipedia article about the nonprofit and their work, or if you know we had a student who wrote the Wikipedia article about HIV and AIDS in Malawi, and part of that was what initiatives are happening in Malawi to help in this work. Um, and so there's just such a broad range of content that you can cover, and I think that that is empowering but also kind of scary. And that's why we have part of our instructor resources is um, if you want to curate a list of recommended articles before the class starts, it's a good way that you and I can work together to say, okay, so I have 50 students in my class. I want them to work either individually or in groups. So let's come up with 50 topics or maybe just 25. And you can say, hey, if you are the kind of student who doesn't want to do the emotional labor of like picking their own topic, pick from the list. Or if you think that you have an interest that you are passionate about, that you want to pursue, use the, the wiki ed resources for helping to pick a topic on your own and come to me with a proposal. Um, and that's part of what we can build in to your assignment based on the capacity that you have in your TAs or the work that you want to do with the level of your students. Um, so again, it's really, it really is the tip of the iceberg, but I think it's a, that's a really, really, two really, really cool courses. So, yeah. And that's why this is great too, because like some people are like, okay, but I teach the same text every year. You know, I teach the same course 10 years in a row. But you're not assigning your students to do the same work. It's going to be different every single year. There's going to be new research. There's going to be new stuff going on. New, like I said, new legislation, new nonprofits, new community organizers whose biographies you want to write about, um, new scientists, new papers, new everything is like so interesting and so. Dynamic, and I think that that's why this is such a great project. <laughs> you can tell I'm very excited about it. <laughs> yes, okay, so next. I'm a librarian at the South South City Library. Most of my undergraduate students tend to use their Wikipedia resources for their paper. So I have to learn more about the quality and the back end of Wikipedia. Yeah. And I can put top of the phones. Like that. It has been a great workshop. Yeah, I'm glad. I think one thing that I hear, I don't know if you guys can see my computer, but I have a little sticker that says, um, don't cite it, write it. And I think, you know, most of students' academic careers have either been told, don't use Wikipedia, don't cite it, which A, we agree, they should not be citing it, it's an encyclopedia, um, or they're told, go to the research at the bottom and like use the research at the bottom and that's better. But they've never been taught how to do it. Like, no one's ever sat there with them and said, like, how do you know if the research at the bottom is good? How do you know? Have you clicked that link? Where is it coming from? Is it a blog? Is it a website? Is it a library? Is it a journal article? And why does that matter? And so I think part of this assignment actually helps students not just be told do something, but actually helps to learn how to do it. Um, and I think that that's really important. Um, OK, you guys. Hi everyone, I'm Sharice McBride and I am, um, I work in the School of Education, nice. so I train That's right teachers, my, my masters. Oh, okay, I train Total. teachers who are um, most, I, I'm situated in the literacy program, so teachers who are going to be English teachers, all of this is right up my alley, um, I study digital literacy and um, I'm a PhD student and I've taught English for many years, um, but what I'm this is a perfect opportunity to give teachers the chance to enact the digital literacies that we, exactly what you said, they're digitally savvy themselves, but not always digital literate, and then a step further, not knowing how to necessarily enact that pedagogy in their own classrooms. Yes. So um, this is a great opportunity to have teachers practice writing for an authentic audience, um, taking the terms, and much of what we study as teachers is not out there um, on Wikipedia. Some of the um, newer <clears throat> things that we're studying yeah. in pedagogy is not, you know, so there's there's our content that we can write about. And it also gives us a chance to enact teachers as experts, oh, yeah. um, putting their knowledge out there, 
and giving them a chance to um, potentially then take the same experience and then translate it, even if their students don't necessarily write for Wikipedia, still taking exactly. some of the principles and putting it into their practice as um, middle school, high school, those teachers. I've always kind of dreamed. Um, so I did my, my graduate work in School of Education here in Tolman Hall. And um, I've always dreamed since then of like, some of that, uh, what's the movie where the inception, like the, the teachers know how to do the thing and so they go and then teach their students how to do the thing. I don't know, I've always dreamed of the, the, <laughs> how big of a role that can play because part of this is starting younger and helping students understand from a much earlier age that this is not, research isn't a college level thing. Research is what you do every day when you go to the web and you want to find something out. And what is that process of thinking and critical thinking and information, like what does it mean to be critically thinking about anything. Um, and if we start in college, we're starting too late. So yeah, that's awesome. And I also, the, there's a lot of information around education that is not being written about on Wikipedia. So I think that the thematic work they're talking about, like one of the students um, in the privacy class wrote about privacy education, connected toys, like a lot of this new work that's coming up around, you know, what, how do we protect student data? And, and, and every single new education initiative that comes up, what does that mean? Um, so I think that there's a lot of really interesting work that can be done there. Doug, you want to, you said who you were, so I guess. And if anybody can relate to the European meeting, I'm Doug Broad of the American Cultural Center. Yeah. We are co hosting this event with the education. Yeah. So I think everybody RSVP'd. Um, I hope you did. It's okay if you didn't. If you didn't RSVP, I want to make sure I have your name and your email so that I can follow up with everybody at the end of the workshop. So my workflow is that I will go home and tomorrow I will email everybody. Um, hey, nice to meet you. Here's a link to the dashboard. Here's a link to our research resources. Here's a link to the instructor orientation. Take a look on your own time. Let me know if you do want to institute this in a class, if you have any questions, and then we can kind of go from there on an individual case-by-case -case basis. And then the way that you work with your on-campus support is really up to what librarian you're working with. If you want to do something with American culture, you know that's out of my hands, but I would definitely encourage it. Um, yeah, and we have uh, another 15 minutes, so if people want to stay and ask questions, please feel free to stay, but also feel free to run away. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.